Uh, my name is Gary Nugent, and I have been working exclusively, I suppose, in digital marketing since 2009. I've been working in online marketing since before the dot-com era. The late 90s is when I first started working in web stuff that was related to online marketing. Since 2009, I've been doing it exclusively. And one thing that remains consistent from the very earliest days that I worked in that world to the current days is that content is a hard thing to do. Staring at a blank page with a cursor is a hard thing to do. So if you wanted to do yourself a favor, you would do something that was easier to do because then you might actually do it. Because one of the hardest outcomes of that sentiment is that it's hard to get people in client organizations to write content all the time, to produce content. So having them put it on video is the way really that you, know, you can get started and get beyond the blank cursor so that you can start to produce content that comes from you. Because if it doesn't come from you, then where's it gonna come from? So, um, yeah, Screaming Frog is definitely, from an SEO point of view, the place to start, like after I would install Chrome, and that's a lot to do with plugins. Like all the browsers are basically the same nowadays for speed and that kind of stuff, even the Microsoft Edge is fine, so. I guess, really the Google Analytics plugin, <laughs> like, that's one. Uh, so the Chrome browser plugin that, that shows you the page with your analytics data right in front of you. Uh, that's great. Um, and then there are a bunch of other ones that depend on the kind of tools you use. So if you're doing real analysis of landing pages, then there's a crazy egg, you know, browser plugin. So you can, you can look at sites in all kinds of different ways and, and connect it to data that you have. I'm sure there are even more advanced plugins now because I feel like my knowledge is a little dated, both because, you know, it's been, I haven't done as much hands-on work in the last three years as I did in the previous three. And so definitely my knowledge in that, because I kind of shifted focus to something more fundamental. So I stopped depending on tools. So in the past had used and liked Raven tools um, as a great place to aggregate, you know, uh, all of the different stuff that you needed to look at and report to a client. And especially that you could produce kind of living PDFs where you could link what's in the PDF back to the data set. The, in the tool and go deeper. Uh, really, uh, Excel for me is, is like, I, so I've developed a few spreadsheets just to guide the processes of keyword research. Uh, also, there's one that I borrowed and bastardized that works with Screaming Frog data to visualize some of that. So using pivot tables. So I'm not really a pivot table guy, but this tool kind of does it in a way that helps you get a slightly different view of what's in there. Using, honestly, Excel and Word and trying to use as much as possible what the client uses because uh, I want to get to the content conversation as soon as possible. Like, you know, let's write some content, let's make some content, and you've got to come to the plate and do that with me. This is a collaboration. So I stopped using so many tools because I thought they might be intimidating to clients as well and rather sit and learn what they're using. In that sense, I detooled a little bit in the last three years uh, to varying degrees of success, honestly, and that's on both sides of the table. Generally, if that content is not coming and pushing, then it's, it's not gonna be successful. Well, there's an old SNFU song, which is an old Edmonton punk band, which I love because, you know, I was that kind of kid, at least part of me, uh, called Get Off Your Ass and Do Something. And this is what I would say to clients that it's about 20 minute abs. So you need to do it with regularity, whatever it is, and your job is to sit down and do something and you know that you're supposed to be doing something. And then whatever that is, if you set up that rigor and commit to it and make sure that if your client is someone who reports to someone else or whatever, business owner or management structure, that that person endorses what's happening. So uh, just allocating the time and, and kind of treating it with reverence. And this is something that we only change if there's an actual human emergency. <laughs> we treat it as sacred because it's important to us. And then within that, I would say that it's variable what you would do because different people have different challenges in getting the content. Sometimes it's a question of format. So everybody wants it in one format. I say, no, 
it, it should be able to be written ultimately on a cocktail napkin. So for me, the advice then is to get into someone who is uh, within the organization already holds a position of administrative responsibility of some kind. Uh, so they already have the basic skills of managing multiple things at once and doing repetitive tasks within those.